Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode I'm just going to let the contracts guide me a little bit though I have to say a lot of these satellite contracts are a little bit uh, troublesome because uh, normally they'd be fine but the inclination of one degrees in the case of real solar system is not that easy. Um, if it was anything 28 degrees or above, well, you know what, I guess I could change my launch location. Uh, I could just decide not to launch from Cape Canaveral. If I was launching at an equatorial location, I guess that wouldn't be too bad. Maybe we should try that, but I don't think it's the first thing I'm going to go for. Yeah, but uh, I guess I guess it's doable. Though one other thing is that um, I I'm, I'm worried about the that has power. Uh, does that... I, I don't know if that requires solar panels or just batteries because we haven't unlocked uh, did we unlock solar panels I'll have to check uh, but um, that's going to be a thing so I, I need to know what that has power means because I think I just always uh, in fulfilling these contracts I've been doing it in stock and I've always just slapped solar panels on so yeah interesting issue but yeah, it gets worse. Uh, this one wants a specific longitude of ascending node. Uh huh. And uh, geosynchronous. And then there's a specific orbit of the moon, which is interesting. We're not quite there yet. We've got to explore the moon, which would be the first thing. We've got to rescue a Kerbal, which would be very difficult, considering we haven't gotten to manned stuff yet. But uh, perhaps the right thing to do is... Uh, sounding rocket record I think we should aim for and I also can do this space data from space around size data from space around Kerbin so those two contracts uh, probably will go together and let's try and toss it maybe to a very high position maybe in fact uh, toss a probe into uh, the same height as geosynchronous so around this area which it should get us our high reading if we get uh, if it's get it sufficiently high enough. So I don't know if we have an antenna that will reach all the way. But then again we could I guess we could program the real uh, remote tech computer, maybe. Anyway, let's take a look. Okay, so do we have solar panels? Yeah, okay. Well, we haven't uh, paid the entry cost, but let's do that, I guess. All right. So, hello. Cannot be the first part of this. All right. Okay, so we need a probe of some sort, and since we're sending it high up, I guess that will be logical. And yeah, I mean, otherwise we'd have to pay the uh, entry cost for one of these two. This one is a little bit heavier than this, uh, actually by a factor of 10, so that's not good. Uh, antennae, what kind of antennae do we have? Um, this one is uh, 4,000 kilometers, 400 kilometers, 1,000 kilometers. Not great. Not great on the antennae. Now we could put multiple antennae and hope that increases our range, but it's not going to be much. But let's say we put two on. Okay. Looks like it has arms and it's waving or something. All right. So let me uh, continue on with this and I'll see what I can put together. Okay, I've built the rocket, but I'm looking at these instruments. I've slapped on a thermometer as well, since why not? It's only a cost of eight. And uh, I think I'm going to unlock this Geiger counter. Um, then there's this marvelous miniature mystery goo, which says, uh, part not supported by RO, but placed and costed by RP0, which is sort of strange, but that's okay. Let's, let's unlock that as well. And this is a big thing, so let me uh, hold off on that. It's also got quite a mass to it. So we've got the temperature scan and we've got the Geiger counter. So we've got all sorts of shenanigans in there. Otherwise it's uh, more, more or less the same probe. I, uh, why did I press that key? Um, I put 10 units of hydrazine this time and 10 units at the, with the Araby sustainer uh, that one is Araby High still, it's not the Araby 150. So we're using an Araby High there, and that should be quite alright. And then uh, 
Yep, aniline, uh, red fuming nitric acid there. And then uh, just uh, two stages, not uh, three stages this time because we want to keep it cheap. And uh, I'm using the Vanguard, of course. So a single Vanguard there, kerosene, liquid oxygen all the way up here. And that should simplify things. The Vanguard seemed to control things quite well uh, with its uh, five degrees of gimbling. And by the time we get to the era B, we should be A, quite, <clears throat> quite high. And uh, we should also be ready for the RCS to take over for that. So we've got the RCS ports burning hydrazine here, which will be a heck of a lot better than burning HTP to stabilize things. So, yeah. Hmm, what to call it? What have we been calling things, anyway? Oh, like that. Hmm. Well, I don't want to hit gamma because that's something else. Um, delta is also used. Epsilon is also used. <laughs> I think I better quit with the Greek names, huh? Uh, Greek letters are quite profusely used. Um, hold on, let me think about what to name it. Okay, I've done Norse gods and goddesses in a previous series. This time I think I'm going to go for Indian deities. So, uh... So we're going to go with Pusan 1, and Pusan is uh, the god of roads and travelers. So uh, yeah, I think that suits us just fine. So uh, we are going with uh, traveling here as the idea. And uh, if we aim for the moon, we'll go for the god of the moon or something like that. So I think that'll be just fine. Uh, the, the Indian Space Agency has already used a few. Uh, I think they've used Agni, the god of fire. So, I'll just lay off of those. But, yep, otherwise I think uh, this should be okay to go. So let's launch. Uh, gotta make sure that the Explorer Probe's own antenna is actually active though. Let's peek in here. Ah, uh, don't, don't, okay, uh, oh, 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 uh, extend antenna. Okay. Oh. Oh, its antennas are like that. Oh, that could be bad. Hmm, retract antenna. And what if we say just activate? Okay, now it has an omni range of 1,000 kilometers without extending the antenna. That's interesting. Not too sure how that works. Oh, I haven't put any uh, solar panels on. But I've got a lot of electric charge. That's fair enough. This thing is not going to uh, survive up there for very long. This is not a satellite. So we'll go with that. All right, uh, SAS on, throttle is up. I think we're okay now. Okay, off it goes. So I've been testing uh, RSS visual enhancements off to the side and I used that in my recent space shuttle launch video. Unfortunately for that video I had to cut out like every part that wasn't involved in the space shuttle including stock parts and also use active texture management uh, aggressive I couldn't use OpenGL because OpenGL didn't work with the EMB series that I was using to uh, create the effect the cinematic effect so yeah maybe OpenGL plus active texture management aggressive would be able to bring the RAM thing down a bit so I could fit more parts, but I don't know. So for now, uh, RSS visual enhancements is a little bit too intense, I think. And I'm saying that because, boy, is this landscape dark. <laughs> I Anyway, uh, I better start turning here. No, whoa, 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 too much, too much, too much. Uh... Ooh, that was very aggressive of you, Smarty SS. Maybe I shouldn't be relying on you. 
Oh, 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 oh. I'll take manual control from here, thanks. Jeez. Louise. Smart ASS is all over the place. Okay, our apoapsis is growing nice and steadily there. Still on the first stage here. Okay, uh, well we stage things a little bit differently here. I want to set, come on, and get the fairings off, get RCS on, and now fire that engine. Okay. Now, I didn't action group the commutatrons, so let me activate those manually. I don't know if there's any benefit to extending the probe zone antennas. Let's see. Well, it fixed out, but I don't see any range improvement. It's got an internal Geiger counter anyway. Don't know if carrying a separate Geiger counter was really very helpful. Anyway, up we go. Get the feeling I'm not really maximizing my apoapsis, really. Sort of doing, going a little bit too horizontal, perhaps. Yeah, let's just tilt up and try and maximize apoapsis instead. Oh, there's a new one. From space just above Kerbin's waters? I thought we would have done that. But anyway, I'm not complaining. Transmit. Good deal. And I suppose the Geiger counter... No. That we have done. Huh. Didn't get as high as I thought we would. Well, we fulfilled that one. We, we're we not getting up to... Whoa, whoa, okay, stop that. Need to... Let's see. I'm going to pump the hydrazine. Oh, that's all full already. Okay. Uh, in that case, let's do do that. Okay. So that should expand all of that. Let's go with just a probe. And thrust. Didn't really do the ideal trajectory for this sort of thing, I guess. Well, I don't guess. Definitely didn't do the ideal trajectory for this sort of thing. Nope, that fell short of the second contract. Still water. Yeah, I, I should bring up the biome reading. What, what, I've got that somewhere. Uh, landing? Yeah, surface biome is right there. Guess that's that's something to keep up. And G forces are high, things are falling off. And massive disintegration. All right, all right, we have to do better. Let me go to the VAB. Okay, I think I deserve some credit for this one. This one is going to be good. First of all, we've got enough delta V to get into orbit, so that's uh, very, very positive. And also, uh, not that we necessarily need to get into orbit, but that's certainly a lot more than we had before. But I've decided to put boosters, as you can see, with uh, not solid rocket boosters, because that'll uh, throw off the mass considerably. Uh, the math, mass calculation is already a little bit off. As you can see, it says 24.7, and this is 19.3. But uh, but the benefit of this is that the Airbnb sustainers are very, very cheap. They only cost six. But they have uh, in the Airbnb 150 configuration, they have 17.8 kilonewtons of thrust, which is quite a lot, actually. Uh, their ISB is not good, but uh, 17.8 times eight boosters is uh, roughly 144 kilonewtons of thrust. If you take a look at the Vanguard, the Vanguard has less than that, 
that cost 750. Eight of these only cost 48. So that's a pretty big gap. Now the Vanguard has way better ISP, especially at sea level. And in fact, even the SRBs have uh, better ISP at sea level than the Aerobees. Uh, the the Aerobees are really better for vacuum, if anything. But uh, yeah, I mean, check the, that it's service module, so it's pressure fed, it looks good. Uh, they look okay, the only question is whether they separate properly. I think they do. I put the nose cones on this time to make sure that they don't cause undue drag. And uh, effectively what this means is uh, they're, not, they're not carrying much mass for their own thrust. Uh, their thrust is 17.8, uh, so it'd be able to carry, what, 1.78 tons, let's say. They're only carrying uh, 0.7 tons, uh, not including their own weight and nose cone. So, so yeah, that allowed me to extend the center, and so we get the more benefit from the Vanguard's ISP. And so that's lifting our total delta V quite a lot. And as you can see, uh, once these guys run out, uh, the the thrust to weight ratio for the Vanguard is very good. Uh, we we are left with quite a lot of thrust remaining in that stage. Peak out at 6.67, and so that's all right. Now I I don't think I need the Geiger counter. That's built into the to the probe core, so let's not have that. Let's see, uh, we say start deployed, I think is how we say that it should be activated right from the start. Okay, so I think that's that. Uh, the only real question is whether these separate properly. I think they, they look pretty good for that, but we'll see. Alright, so let's take this out to the launch pad. Okay, so with this uh, Delta V, if this works, this could be useful for launching some some real satellites. So I'm looking forward to this. Uh, frame rates are pretty low right now. Uh, well, anyway, let's just get going. All right, everything looks good. Fire and launch. Okay, quite loud. Oh, wait a minute. Why is this aniline one... Why is this one not burning fully? Crap. There's some asymmetry going on here. That's going to be bad for when we decouple. No, no. Okay. I don't know what's up with that, but I'll shut it down manually once we get to the right point. Okay, now booster set. Alright, they're all clear. Alright, well that was almost a big problem, but we'll have to review what that was all about once we get into the VAB again. So, given the way it was burning fuel, I suppose one of the Aerobees were not in the Aerobee 150 mode, it was actually in the lowest one, lowest thrust category, the lowest uh, version. And that's why I was burning fuel slower. I think that's the only reasonable explanation. But why that would be, I have no idea. I plot, I put them there using symmetry, using eight-way symmetry. So, no idea. So ironically, the one that I didn't have enough delta V for orbit on, I decided to use a more orbital trajectory, and this one, which I do have orbital delta V with, I'm just pointing straight up and burning. Okay, first stage out. 
set. RCS on and burn. Our surface horizontal speed is very low and decreasing. We're over grasslands. I suppose, no. Is there anything we haven't done over grasslands? No. No, no, no. Ah, uh, when I resized the tanks, I accidentally added more hydrazine than I had before into this this stage. Wow, this uh, altitude level is really a thing, huh? Uh, this 3,250 kilometers is tough to get to. And before you all give me suggestions on how I should have done this, please don't. Please don't. This is not this is not that kind of thing. Okay, we've expanded the hydrazine there. And let's decouple. And here we go. We're we're past the limit, but we actually have to get to that point before the contract is fulfilled. I wanna see how far up we can go. Okay, so Basically, 3,750, we'll say, kilometers. So we're a long way off from geosynchronous orbit, that's for sure. There's a probe with 0 .044 tons of empty mass. Okay, heading up to uh, the target point. Okay, the sounding rocket record is reached. Let's see how we do on re-entry without the commutatrons extended, which means we'll lose communication as soon as I retract this, I think. Oh, well, let's see if we can do something over here. No. No. Okay, let's just retract this thing. Oh, we're still in communication, huh? wonder how that... Oh, uh, I guess... No? This should only have 1,000 kilometers. I know that, that there's a particular calculation with the base's own, own range. I don't know how far out that goes, really. We want to get uh, heating on a straight down trajectory. Just a procedural fuel tank. And some RCS ports facing the heat, and maybe the antennae, but I think retracted, they're probably not too bad off. Serious G-forces, of course. Ah. I think the G-forces really got it. Let me just check. Commutronics say G-forces. It's still overheating. They must have uh, overheated pretty suddenly because I didn't see the heat go up to their maximum tolerance, but maybe it was more sudden than I could catch. All right, back to Space Center. So, what have we got? Hmm, new sounding rocket record. Well, heck, why not? Satellites. Inclination one degree is the trick here. We've got the solar panels, so that's fine. Let's give it a go. But the inclination change is gonna be tricky. Okay, let's see. Okay, so this time we're going to try and launch a satellite into a particular orbit so I'm I've expanded the the hydrazine tank here so that we can make the necessary maneuvers hopefully I don't know if it's enough or not I've also given my little probe a cape in the form of a solar panel and so it sort of looks like that now sort of interesting uh, I don't think that adds too much mass to the to the whole thing so no biggie I don't know if we have quite enough delta V here. 
Let me make some adjustments. Do you suppose we should go to 12 of these? Well, it can't cost too much, can it? Let's uh, let's see now. Okay, well, it'll be tricky, but let's call this Pusan 3. And let's find out if we can launch a satellite with this. Uh, probably we're not going to make the predetermined orbit, but they've given us a substantial advance. So uh, we can do some testing. I think it'll be all right. So uh, we'll try to make this our first, uh, first uh, orbital satellite, first legit satellite, and see what happens. Okay, I got rid of the landing window because I don't think we need it this time, and the game is running as slowly as I can take it. So let's get on with this. Okay, all, all the tanks look full, so everything should work out about the same. Let's find out. Here we go. Okay, it looks like they're burning about the same rate this time. Wow, was it loud though. There's no particular angle giving me better frame rates right now. I wonder what happens if I... Oh, let me turn this down, maybe. Uh... I don't think it helped my frame rates one bit, actually. Nope. Smoke screen was not the problem. Okay, getting ready for booster set here. Different situation than last time, obviously. Okay, but they're clear. Very nice. Quite a unique thing there. Gotta dump the fairings. Okay, that was good clearance actually. Antennae out. Question is whether we'll have any sort of communication at Apoapsis. <laughs> That's tricky. So yeah, I think the mode is to coast to Apoapsis. Gonna shut down the engines. Gonna Yep, separate. And perhaps a little bit of a boost forward with the RCS. Well, that's the, that's the orbit we need to hit. Gonna be tough to get to that, but yeah, it looks like communication will be fine. Oh, we still have to unlock uh, maneuver nodes and everything. <laughs> Forgot about that. That's gonna make this even more interesting. And let's... light. It's really up to the hydrazine to get us into uh, co to correct our inclination. I don't think we've got enough for that, not by a long shot. But we'll see how far we get. It's possible what we need is three stages. We could have a first stage with the boosters get us up to here, and second stage get us into orbit, and then the third stage correct the inclination. But that's expensive, heavy, possibly beyond the limits that we have. Our current limit in the VAB is, uh, I think, 20 meters height limit. So I, I could see such a rocket uh, getting pretty fat if uh, we try that, because uh, otherwise it will uh, outstrip the height limit. Okay, high on one side, low on the other. Not the greatest situation. Top tank is full. Hydrazine there is still there. So what was the orbit again? 
Uh, not too high on the apoapsis. We want 48 by 477. Uh, 480 by 477, sorry. Our periapsis is here. Apoapsis is on the other side. Well, let's wait till apoapsis. Okay, uh, so around here, let's... Uh, Heck, just turning around is gonna burn all of our delta, uh, all of our hydrazine anyway. Um, no, no, no. Smart ASS is gonna mess up. Okay. Okay, now it's close enough to using up that hydrazine. Let's separate. Right, now we need to go correct our inclination. Wow, no way. Not even in the ballpark. Okay, so we managed to correct 4 degrees out of the total 28 degrees, so about one seventh of what we needed to do. Uh, so if Al's probably facing the wrong way, this is not going to work out for this very well. But. Let's see if we hit some other biomes while we're out here. I don't know. Uh, let's get that uh, landing thing up again. Oh, missed uh, mountains. Darn. We've done every highland uh, thing, so I think, uh, well, let's just check, check the thermometer. Oh, sorry, that's not the thermometer. That's the antenna. Oh, Highlands, we haven't done the thermometer yet. Okay, so we got some signs after all. It's the Geiger counter we've done. Okay, all right, I give up. Anyway, we've got a proper satellite in orbit. It's got multiple antennae. Uh, it's just not in the right orbit. <laughs> so, I'm gonna have to work on something a little bit better. So we've already got our maximum two contracts. Uh, we'll aim for the next sounding rocket record next time. But clearly, well, maybe with our our new Pusan 3 with the 12 boosters, we'll be able to get up to that. I think that's possible. We'll have to see. Um, yep, yeah, otherwise, it's going to be a tough slog. They're already asking for a satellite in a polar orbit of the moon. <laughs> Um, we're not there yet. No, no, we're not. But uh, it would be interesting to try and get to the moon. Uh, that's just a matter of Delta V and being able to build a rocket of a certain size. Uh, but right now the VAB, 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 how can I upgrade you if I can't right click you? Oh, that one I can right click. Just the VAB I can't right click? Oh, there we go, finally. Uh, max part support unlimited. I don't think that was what, is that right? Okay, well it's not giving me the info I need here. I mean here it's clearly limiting me to 40 tons. Uh, I guess it's not limiting me by parts, but it is limiting me to height of 20 meters, which is pretty short as far as moon rockets are concerned. Uh, so yeah, uh, our actual mass is 22.8 tons by the way. So we've we've got a bit of a problem there. And so I don't know what uh, it'll increase it to once we upgrade the VAB. But we don't have the cash for that on hand yet. Uh, well, we've got the cash, but we don't have the buffer. Okay, taking a look at the tech tree. I th we can unlock uh, both of these now. 
I guess we should. Let's research uh, survivability. Sounds like a good thing to research. But uh, let's not purchase too many parts. But should I purchase that just yet? Lots of engines. But we can't really build too much bigger of a rocket than we currently have. Bigger solar panels. Ah, a better antenna would be good. That could reach the moon. Ah, uh, little vernier rockets. Favorite little things. Ignite for infinite times. That we need. You know what? I'm willing to open this just for that, I think. Kerosene, huh? Okay, yes. I'm going to totally misuse vernier rockets. <laughs> uh, okay, let's research that. That could be the thing. Yeah, I'm going to repurpose the LR-101 vernier rocket to be my upper stage rocket. And that's probably not what anybody wants to see me do, but that's what's going to happen. Alright, so in the next episode, I am going to once again try to fill that satellite contract and also to break the sounding rocket record. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.